Now, the rest of the story. This isn't a will it, pull it video. I'm just cleaning up field edges actually. Uh, this field uh, would typically have gotten chiseled, but the spread manure on it light enough that our intentions are to just disc it, albeit not intensively, and then it's going to soybeans. So it's really not high on my list of things to worry about trying to work it up because as of right now the weather pattern has changed where we're getting more rain so more moisture but I'm still not well, none of us are really all that eager to open up any more ground than we absolutely have to just in case we go right back to a dry trend again and I'm just about done with what I wanted to do. I had a, a couple of grass areas that they were encroaching in on the field, or on my field, and I wanted to push them back to get the grass pushed back to where it needs to be. And we are, as of right now, I, we're a little ways off on uh, planting anything yet. There are people putting seed in the ground in the area. I would assume it's soybeans at this point. I'm more okay with uh, putting corn in the ground the 1st of May afterwards and then putting beans in the ground maybe the, the last week of April. down now is gonna get seated down never really see me in the 82 and the VT that much anymore seems like I get well I get most of my hours in the 82 running the baler which really doesn't bother me but one thing about tillage it's you don't really have to worry too much about running out of seed or anything and that's what's gonna be happening here uh, this piece that I'm working down uh, it's gonna get seeded down and well they're calling for 70s here this weekend so figured it'd be high time good timing uh, to go ahead and actually try to get it grass down and then uh, with the upcoming chances of rain next week which they are dialing back a little bit that this will actually take pretty good I'm gonna come up and drag the harrow across it and smooth off anything any of the clumps which there's not very many it's working up it's really working out pretty nice it's just a little tacky but I'm not even going that deep either so even as far as it it's not clumping up or anything and well I'll be honest I've I've pulled this in worse conditions but soybean stubble, planted down, seeded to well, hay or grass, whatever you're gonna do. Seems like in our past experience, that's actually done, you have a better stand following soybeans than you do following corn. Uh, you get the nitrogen from the soybeans. Oh, whatever the credit is. Um, I used to know, or I do know, I just don't have it in the top of my head. And um, that grass seed just grabs it and runs. 
and uh, more or less still got a lot of my random odd jobs to do I mean ideally I just don't want to be starting planting like mid-May which is what it felt like last year and with the moisture that we've had it definitely did recharge the soil um, everything that I chiseled earlier there's moisture there which is also a key reason why I don't want to get carried away chiseling because I don't want to risk drying the ground out I did have to go through and adjust this a little bit uh, my one wheel up front here the gauge wheel was down all the way which I think just from running it it was gradually turning itself on that turnbuckle and I was throwing some pretty good wings out on that side but overall it's doing a nice job which is what we'd expect um, I like the the VT the Earth Master um, but my goals and intentions are to actually switch over to running a cultivator. And I'm trying to find a field cultivator that we could go through and, and use versus running a disc in the spring. And I'd like to go through and rebuild this guy, put all new blades on it, new bearings on it. It's actually got quite a bit of life to it yet, I'd say. but. I'd like to go back to just using it in the fall on corn stubble or corn stalks and I think we get a lot more mileage out of it that way not using it for everything that we're we're trying to turn over so just got to get there right but you can see in the woods and the tree line there everything's definitely greening up uh, they are calling for some 30s here yet this week, but really hoping that doesn't, I don't think it's really going to hurt us too much. Uh, we were looking across one of our waterways yesterday, and even Ryan was saying that, that it definitely got stunted, it got frosted. I haven't been down to the valley, I don't have any valley updates to give you, um, quite honestly. It's going to do what it's going to do. I'm going to be watching for army worms by all means. That's the one thing that I can really control at this point. It's had its fertilizer. And if we can get done with planting and get everything switched over uh, to making hay sooner than later, I mean, weather permitting, I'm not against going through and starting on some first crop. Uh, the end of May because we do have a lot of that random random areas that we're going to do you know waterways and by the time we do all of our our regular acreage anyway and my thing is is with the cattle that we got on on hand and an expanding herd I'm kind of leaning more towards If I can make it and feed it, I'm going to. That goes with making a lot of our pasture ground too. Uh, taking off a first growth and then letting that new growth come up and then put the cattle out on that. Uh, they actually prefer that, that second cut regrowth a lot more than the first cut. You see them kind of jump over anything of that first growth. They're not cleaning up as well as you'd like or as much as I would like. So. I would rather make it and if I feed them that first crop over the winter they're a lot more willing to eat it. Uh, we'll see how where we all end up going forward. I'm I we were gradually increasing our cattle numbers. I mean I jumped up another depending if I call anything out. Um, the one that's the thing that's really getting me is the one cow that I was almost certain that I was gonna have to go through and 
I was going to be getting rid of her because she didn't calve last year. I had two that I was actually watching for that they didn't calve last year. And I mean, they were middle-aged cows when I bought them. They were bought in cattle. And when I didn't get any calves out of them last year, I mean, the one in particular, her body condition really wasn't all that great, even though she is actually eating some, some better quality groceries. So it cost me a little bit of money to, to feed her. I'm not going to deny that. Um, she actually threw out a really, really nice looking bull calf. And same thing with that other cow. She also, she also threw out a nice calf. Both bulls. I'm actually sitting heavier on bull calves than heifers right now. Which is fine because, you know, I've got to sell them anyway. Uh, having a few heifers to choose from keep back is kind of nice but um, getting the bulls up and running is is uh, is pretty big too but putting in more bulls than what you potentially need to get them get them bred back is is huge to us anyway uh, we only had the two bulls in with them uh, the year before last which resulted in me not having as many bread as I really should have, and I was pretty upset about that. But um, as far as putting the extra bulls in and having that extra bull power there, uh, there's no reason that all of my cows and heifers that are able to produce a calf don't have calves in them at this point. Uh, largely just because that that one cow was able to produce a really nice bull. She didn't look that great. They say, not going to deny that. Um, to the point where I was kind of wondering, it's like, well, does she have a calf in her? Um, and she did. And she took right to raising him. I mean, I didn't have any issues with her claiming him or nothing. So, I mean, does she get a... She's going to get another turn. I mean, if she doesn't calve next year, we'll see. But as of right now, if she's taking care of a calf and he's he's drinking good I and mean, I'm not heartless I'm more than willing to give her another chance because I'm not in a position where I can just dump cattle just can't so, well I'm done here I gotta go clean up some waterways because I want to see some bulldoze some ground that I bulldoze get that seeded down tomorrow and then I actually got to work on machinery a little bit hopefully get dad and chisel Ryan, uh, what was Ryan going to do? Uh, he had something we had planned for him to do tomorrow. And, you know, not trying to get too crazy eager to do drop in and start planting. I just don't want to get ahead of ourselves, which I don't think we are. But it's very easy to go from you're your too early, you're too early to, well, now we're starting to get too late. It's, it's easy. You get a week or so rained out for a week, and then next thing you know, it's it's May and you're starting to get desperate to get seed in the ground. So I'll talk to you guys later. Well, this is the next day after bringing the disc up and working this down. Just soybean stubble. It looks like it's been no-till for a couple of years. And really breaking up what clods were there. I mean, it'll make good seed bed for putting grass or whatever in. I say soybean stubble has pretty much become my favorite as far as if you're gonna seed anything down I'd rather it be following soybeans. Um, finding a lot less trouble uh, following beans versus following corn. I got the manager here with me and oh, buddy seeds in these tractors. More tractor than what I need to pull this but uh, buddy seat for passengers are sure nice but oh yes and the assistant manager is down there on the floor but this won't take me very long then I gotta go seed down uh, that ground mine that was bulldozed won't take much and that grain drill really doesn't have a whole lot that it needs to do this year and we'll be sitting pretty good on that <laughs> I haven't even begun to, well, seems how this is the planting tractor. I haven't even begun to really go through the planter yet, but at least 
I do know it doesn't need much, so that's working in my favor. You gotta get all the, the controllers back in here for the airbag and the switch box mounted back on the monitor. Uh, this actually was on the planter, and I was in the process of getting everything hooked up, uh, but we gotta spread some fertilizer in some of our pastures yet. And for the way prices are on fertilizer and stuff, uh, we'd like to make sure that we're getting our the most most for our money so using the the guidance on the 79 it just makes sense too at this point so this stuff is already pretty mellow that's just what soybean stubble is and it does look look pretty nice looking out across it On with the rain that they're calling for they backed off as of right now they're not calling for a week of rain uh, they're calling for Tuesday is the highest chance like 80% and then the following days I think it's like like a 40% chance or 47% chance somewhere there uh, hopefully not enough to really slow us down too much I know you really shouldn't wish away rain but I, I would appreciate a chance to get some of our odds and ends done before it just gets to the point of no return where you know, planting does take priority. Isn't that right? Yeah. So, well, I'll catch up with you guys later. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I'll talk to you later.